Hello and welcome. This is uh, Mike D and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the product Lights Console Suite. In order to control certain lights functions using your Stream Deck devices. First thing you have to do is to install the necessary scripts into DAS uh, scripts menu. So you've got to navigate into your main library, into the path scripts, Mike D, Lights Console and execute the first script Add to Menu to Toolbar. This dialog will pop up and it is suggested to leave the uh, default options. Press the Add to Menu button. A message will pop up and uh, it prompts us to restart DAS Studio before continue. This is what I'm going to do now. Back to Studio. Now I'm going to install, to install the included profile for my Stream Deck Classic device with the 15 keys. First thing I have to do is to navigate again into my main DAS library, into the path General, Mic D, Lights Console. Right click anywhere on this grey area and choose the option Browse Folder Location. The folder will pop up into a new window. Now I'm going into the Stream Deck driver and um, on the top I have to select the necessary device, the Stream Deck device and not the Stream Deck Plus device. You have to install an external plugin for this profile. Click on this uh, keyboard icon, uh, choose the plugin tab and type super into uh, this search box. Uh, all you have to do is just press the install button. It says you install as I have already installed it in, into my uh, computer. Uh, and um, the Super Macro uh, plugin by Bar Raider is going to install into your uh, Stream Deck uh, driver. All I have to do now is just double click on this file, Mike Delight Console for Dash Studio 15 Keys. And uh, then you will see that a new profile called uh, uh, Mike Delights Console for Dash Studio 15 Keys will be added into your uh, Stream Deck driver. This profile has three pages as you can see. In this page there are three additional buttons that lead into some uh, external profiles. The first button is for any main DAS profile you may have on your Stream Deck device. And uh, if you own the products uh, Autofocus Suite or Tone Mapping Console, you can link these buttons uh, into these profiles as well. In order to do this, you've got to click on each one of these buttons. And in the Profile option, you've got to choose the corresponding profile from the pop-up menu. I have loaded an older promo scene in order to work with, let's see now, the Stream Deck configuration. Each column in the first two pages is responsible to control one of um, the light's most common uh, properties. For example, in the first page, uh, the first column um, is responsible for the geometry of the light. Uh, the second column controls the spread angle of a spotlight. The third column is responsible for the height and the last one is responsible for the width of the light. The first row may have some icons with a question mark or some icons with a question mark and a forbidden sign. Pressing each one of these buttons will display the current value into the status bar. Pressing and holding each one of these buttons with the forbidden sign will reset uh, the current um, properties value into the default state. The icons on the second row with the plus icon or the next uh, word will increase the value of uh, its property and um, the icons on uh, the last row with the minus uh, sign uh, will decrease the value of uh, uh, the current property. Use uh, these arrows to navigate through the Stream Deck's pages. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure the uh, light that it is at the uh, right side of my model. It is the main right, uh, main right light. I've got to tell you in this point that um, 
uh, all the scripts are working using uh, the light that it is selected in uh, this or down menu in your active uh, viewport. If you've got no light selected over here, then uh, the scripts will search for any selected light into your uh, scene tab. Pressing uh, the first key with the uh, question mark with the geometry uh, title uh, in your Stream Deck uh, device, it will show you in the status bar the current geometry of the selected light. As you can see, it is point. Pressing the plus key, I'm moving to the next geometry and minus key for the previous. I'm pressing the plus key sometimes to see in the status bar that the geometry of the selected light uh, has been changed. I'm going to select uh, the rectangular geometry for our example. The second column is, respons is responsible for um, my spotlight spread angle. As I've got a uh, spotlight over here, I can uh, press the uh, plus icon to increase its geometry by one degree, as you can see uh, in the status bar and at the same time you can see in, the, in my scene that um, uh, the spotlight's uh, cone is increasing and now decreasing. If um, you are not uh, happy with the result you can always press and hold uh, the top key with um, the forbidden sign and in, the, in this case the default uh, uh, 60 degrees uh, value will be set uh, at the current parameter. Uh, let's say that I want uh, to have a little bit more spreading angle, um, somewhere at uh, 70 degrees. In the third and the fourth column of um, the first page of Stream Deck, I can control my light's uh, height and uh, width, as you can see over here. Uh, if uh, you check uh, the current values, you will see that it is the default ones of 10 centimeters. I want to increase uh, both of, the, of their values, uh, of the height and the width, uh, let's say somewhere to around uh, 100 centimeters. If you press and hold the plus or the minus uh, key, you will see that um, the value is uh, increasing automatically. I am setting this one at 100 centimeters as well. You can also see that um, the status bar is uh, uh, displaying all the time uh, the current value. Uh, in the second page of my Stream Deck device, you can see that I can control all the intensity and the luminous flux of the light, as well as the temperature. The first column is responsible for controlling my light's intensity, and the two next columns are responsible for my light's luminous flux. The first of them is increasing or decreasing the luminous flux uh, exponentially and uh, to be precise um, it's uh, key increasing or decreasing my uh, light uh, flux 10 times up or down. The next column is multiplying uh, or dividing uh, my um, current uh, luminous flux by 125 by percent um, or if you want, this column is responsible to make a great, a greater adjustments over the value and uh, I can use the next column to make minor adjustments. Now it is a good time to switch on my NVIDIA Ray preview on this uh, viewport in order to get a better look at uh, the final result of my lights. I also want to get uh, into the Environment tab and I'm going uh, to select um, the scene only in the environment mode uh, in order to have uh, only my lights um, affect the lighting of the scene. Now I'm switching uh, into the custom view 3 uh, camera view in order to get a closer look into my model's uh, face. And now I can adjust my lights um, intensity and luminosity easier. I'm going to start uh, increasing my lights uh, luminux exponentially um, and I think that uh, I am already too high. 
now I'm going to decrease the Luminux uh, flux using uh, the multiplication button. So I'm going to get smaller adjustments um, to get the light where I want it to be. Uh, I can also increase or decrease my light's intensity by 102%, uh, but um, there are minor adjustments and I don't want to do them now. I can also reduce my uh, light temperature uh, into uh, somewhere 5,500 5, um, 500 Kelvin in, or in order to get uh, a warmer light for my model's face. Into my third page um, of Stream Deck, you can see that I have some uh, other icons. Uh, these icons are responsible for uh, rotating uh, the light horizontally or vertically and also locked on, unlock the current light. Uh, this icon is responsible for uh, cycle through all um, the visible lights into my active viewport, so it's going to select them up here. And I've got some other options about um, um, toggle the meter on or off also the current state of the render emitter property uh, using this button with the question mark. Uh, let's see them in action. Let's change our current uh, view into the perspective view. So now I can see my light. And as you can see, uh, my light uh, has the render emitter on um, over here, you can check it by pressing the enter emitter button with a question mark over here. And you will see down on the status bar that uh, the current render emitter is on. Pressing uh, the button uh, below this uh, question mark will toggle the render emitter on and off. As you can see now, turning the render emitter off will uh, make our light not visible uh, into the render, although uh, the light is still emitting. Using uh, the first key over here with the light and the circle, it will uh, cycle through all the um, visible lights in my viewport and um, these lights will be selected in the active viewport. I'm going uh, to change into another um, custom view in order to show you uh, the next property. Also, I will uh, switch off the NVIDIA Array Preview as I don't want it anymore. The next scripts are uh, partially mimic uh, my plugin's uh, orbital lights uh, functionality. They actually rotate um, a light around a selected node uh, horizontally or verti vertically and if I don't have any other node selected into the scene, uh, the lights will spin around their own axis instead. First thing I have to do is to unlock my selected light as it is locked by default uh, in uh, the current position. And uh, in order to do this, I've got to press uh, this button over here, lock and lock and it will unlock my current light as you will see in the status bar. Uh, this button actually locks the translation and uh, rotation of my uh, selected light so I don't move it accidentally in another position. Having my main light selected uh, into the scene, I'm holding the control key of, on my keyboard and now I'm selecting uh, Lucy's route as well. Now I can press the rotate clockwise horizontal key and as you can see now the light is moving clockwise around Lucy uh, in incremental steps of uh, 0 0.5 degrees. If I'm pressing the counterclockwise um, the, rotate will, the light will rotate in the other direction. If I'm using um, the rotate vertical up position, you can see that now the light is moving up and um, by pressing the opposite key, it will bring the light down. All this light rotation was um, with the center of Lucy, as Lucy was uh, the second selected node. If I have only my um, light selected into the scene, 
and um, I'm pressing the same keys again, you will see that now the light is not uh, rotating around any node, but um, it is spinning around itself horizontal, horizontally or uh, vertically um, with the same incremental value of um, 0 0.5 degrees each time. You can change all these uh, steps uh, using uh, this setting uh, script with the cogs over here and as you can see there are many options uh, for most of uh, the, script, uh, the scripts used uh, in our example. I hope you find all these scripts um, very handy in controlling um, uh, most of uh, uh, Light's properties uh, through your uh, Stream Deck Classic device. Thank you for watching my video. Thank <laughs> you.